Yes. Now, um, so next we will use revised simplex method for artificial variables. So how we can use revised simplex method for artificial variables? For that we have taken a problem. First we have taken a simplex problem with max ob objective function. Then we have taken another problem with mean. And we have uh, formulated, we have constructed um, the table in such a manner. So it gives you, helps you. Uh, uh, calculation becomes easy. Uh, uh, similar way, similar kind of thing that we'll be using. Yes, no, I'm not discussing much theory behind and um, that that B inverse and all that, but we are just uh, following the algorithm. Actually, and not uh, discussing the theory behind it. This is. We are not studying the mathematics honors class or uh, this is more application oriented problem. So we are trying to know what is being, how the calculation is being done and how the process goes on. We are just following the algorithm and how it can be discussed, how it can be understood. So this is the problem that we have taken. So this is max z equals to minus x1 plus 4x2 subject to x1 plus x2 is greater than or equals to 2. 3x1 plus 2x2 is less than or equals to 12 and x1 is greater than or equals to 1. And, uh, and uh, why I have taken two variable problem uh, so that I, I just draw the graph and check what could be the possible solution and whether my method gives the exact correct solution or not that and I have solved it graphically as you can see here very small way and I found that it's quite efficient way of doing it and uh, I've done the solution of the problem using device simplex method. So, so to standard form, so first let's uh, we'll not uh, look at the max objective function first, we'll, we'll look at the constraints first. So since first one is greater than equals to two, so we have uh, added one surplus variable and one artificial variable to make that equals to two. So surplus variable coefficient is minus one artificial variables coefficient is plus one second one for the second constraint for the sec second constraint it is less than equals to 12 uh, obviously the right hand sides are greater than equals to zero so no problem we, we have so for the second one it's less than equals to um, 12 so we have just added a slack variable over here slack variable over here um, and uh, for the third one we have uh, added another surplus and artificial variables so now this gives you the so as we know that in the maximized objective function the coefficient of artificial variable must be minus m so have, we have written that way max z equals to and then the standard form of simplex uh, we have just transformed uh, bring uh, the way that we have done in the previous cases so this becomes z plus x1 minus 4x2 <coughs> plus 0 s1 plus ma1 plus 0 s2 0 s3 plus ma3 is equals to 0 and the others are remaining unchanged now is the important part so we have just so as you can see we are again we have written z separately and uh, put a dotted line so here there are for this particular case this this part is three equations so three three equations so here we have tried to find out the one zero 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 one zero and zero zero one so just leaving this particular row so what we have is we have a1 s2 and a3 are my three variables and corresponding vectors are a1 a2 a3 a4 a5 and a7 so these are my a4 a5 and a7 will form this that unit matrix so 1 0 0 0 1 0 0 0 1 and we add e1 with that so this is the definition of b inverse but so z we have taken now here also we have to take this z the first row is very important here it would be always for u1 the coefficient will be 1 for artificial variables the coefficient will be minus m 
and all other variables if they are there in the basis their coefficients will be zero so you can say this kind of mixture of so from here we have just taken taking from the here we are taking the minus n because that gives you the definition of uh, this comes from the theory of the uh, problem itself so always for e1 in the z row what we are writing e1 the coefficient will be one one for artificial variables the coefficient will be coefficients will be minus m and all other variables whether it's slack and surplus but is there it is there in the basis sorry not not surplus variables will not be there in the basis so slack variables their coefficients will be zero so mind that artificial variables coefficients will be or artificial variables corresponding vectors coefficients will be minus m minus m z coefficient will be one and all that and the right hand side so whatever other other vectors that are there so whatever other vectors that are there so a1 this is a1 a2 a3 and a6 so we will be putting the coefficients from here this is one so one minus four one minus four zero and zero and zero so that that part is it's the typical and this is to be noted actually this is very important this particular thing is very important to note so again leaving this leaving this and leaving the z part initially other part is not any we do not have any confusion so the a1 s2 and a3 are the my variables which are uh, which are there in the basis and their corresponding vectors are a4 a5 and a7 so so um, uh, leaving this part so this becomes 1 0 0 0 1 0 and 0 0 1 and uh, from this particular matrix from this particular matrix we can write 1 3 1 for a1 1 3 1 so whatever is left other thing is so a1 a2 a3 a4 a5 a6 a7 so these are my seven vectors and e1 other than e1 we have so this is so 1 3 1 1 3 1 1 2 0 1 2 0 then 0 sorry minus 1 zero, minus 1 0 0 minus 1 0 0 and 0 0 minus 1 0 0 minus 1 right so this part is not it's okay but this part is a little confusing now <coughs> for this one we will be taking the coefficients from here 1 minus 4 0 and 0 1 minus 4 1 minus 4 0 and 0 but here z it will be 1 minus m is for the coefficient of artificial variable 0 for slack variable for z it will be 1 for artificial variable it will be minus m for slack variable it will be 0 for artificial variable again it will be minus m so if you have written this particular part rightly then there will be same there is no other difficulty we will be proceeding in the same manner and we can find the optimum solution so what we get is in this case that my current solution becomes an in the so again we are, we are right now i am not saying what is this particular value so currently a1 is equals to 2 s2 equals to 12 and a3 equals to 1 so if you put that this will be satisfying this particular this particular set of equations will be satisfied and if you put those values in in z max z you will be getting this particular value so as i have said this particular value always gives you the value of z always gives you the value of big because a3 a1 is 2 and a3 is 1 so that means in this case value of z is minus 3m the initial value of z is minus 3m and uh, so x x k and x b by x k we have we have to find out and uh, from uh, a one a two a three and a six we have to find out the j j minus c j for this so 
again uh, j I'm just repeating once so 1 into 1 minus m minus m so this becomes minus 2m plus 1 second one is minus 4 minus m so minus 4 minus m so minus 2m plus 1 is most negative over here so this enters then we calculate the as we have said this, this value will come in the xk top value first so so this can be obtained by as you know this value is nothing but this into that entering particular column entering vectors so you multiply so second value is second row with that one third value is uh, third value of the x x column is third row into this particular column that is the entering and fourth value and we get that as uh, so calculations i am not repeating we have already done the same process so please repeat the same way we will be getting and uh, so we get the values of x k as 1 3 1 then we calculate the ratio this becomes 2 by 1 is 2 30, 12 by 3 is 4 1 by 1 is 1 so that means this is the minimum ratio so this this goes away so this is the entering vector this is the leaving vector so 1 is the key element and we proceed as follows mind that again I am saying this part will not change it will keep I have kept it it remains this particular part remains unchanged this particular part remains unchanged whatever be the number of uh, number of uh, uh, tables or iteration tables and as you can see I have, I have just continued with that same table same vein and same process it does not and as you can see there are simple very simple roughs I didn't require any more wraps also so um, so um, again let's uh, for this particular one so let's do this particular table to this particular table then we will not proceed further I'll take the answer and so so as a3 goes out so this becomes one where the key element is a one so we divide the uh, to get uh, by so so we are dividing by one we get the year remains same remains same so using this row we will be making this zero this zero and this zero that is the row operation so using this row how to make this as zero this also zero so, so simply this we will be subtracting this row to this from this row will be subtracting this row to get this particular row or you can say that uh, or you can say that uh, uh, or you can use that um, that formula new element equals to old element minus p into q by p word so so let's uh, do this one that's because this if these are zero then it will not change so if this is one so this is zero minus one into one by one so this becomes minus one see this is minus one so let's uh, do this one so this is 1, so this is 0, this will 0, this is 0, so this will not change. So because whatever you multiply with 0, it remains unchanged. So now this one is 1, so this is minus a minus, minus a minus 1 into minus 2m plus 1 by 1. So that is minus m plus 2m minus 1. Minus m plus 2m minus 1, this gives you m minus, gives you m minus 1. And so this is current solution is a1 equals to 1, s2 equals to 9 and x1 equals to 1 and z equals to minus m minus 1. If you put those values, you will get the value of z as minus, minus 2 minus, uh, sorry, minus m minus 1 and again you calculate delta j and you will get, so with this row we will multiply this, this will become 0, this row will multiply this, will get some value. Similarly, the most negative will enter. In this case this is minus m plus 1 this is minus m minus 4 so this is most negative so this will enter so to, to enter as i've said this value will come in the xk so a minus m minus 4 then in this row will be multiplied with this and the similar values will be calculated and um, if you proceed further you will be getting 
see here in the first step the first arti one artificial variable goes away the second step also another artificial variable goes away but still we didn't get to the uh, optimum solution then some more improvement has happened here z becomes z equals to here the solution was x1 equals to 1 x2 equals to 1 and s2 equals to 7 so if you put that x1 equals to 1 x2 equals to 1 gives you minus 1 plus 4 that is plus 3 and because a1 and a3 are not there so it will not affect in this case so that gives you the value see this gives you the value of z equals to 3 this value and here i am getting every time it will be coming same and finally what we get in the last last step uh, some more improvement uh, was there here there was some negative value and so we can we have, we have improved that and we get the final solution as x1 equals to 1 x2 equals to 9 by 2 z equals to 17 so and they are all zj minus cjs are uh, greater than equals to zero so we reach the optimum solution okay uh, now the final problem not the final problem of Sherlock Holmes but uh, uh, this is a revised simplex method we are trying to use the artificial variable and uh, we have taken the maximization function previously now we will take a problem with minimization function where the objective function is minimization and how we can convert that to uh, we'll be using the similar kind of logic no, no difference in the logic and uh, only a little bit of notation change in the notation and follow the same way so some uh, here is a constraint with equality sign then there is a constraint with less than equals to sign and there is a constraint with greater than equals to sign so writing that in the maximized standard form so here it was 2x1 minus 3x2 so max so uh, here the first one is x1 plus x2 equals to 5 so we have just introduced an artificial variable for second one it was less than equals to sign so we have just introduced a uh, slack variable and for the third one we have introduced a, introduced a surplus sur as well as an artificial variable and we made the origin or, or, or objective function as max z dash max z dash equals to this is minus 2x1 plus 3x2 and as you know that we have already said that the artificial variable ha will have the coefficient as minus m and minus m Mm, and slack variables and surplus variables will be having coefficients as zero so this is the standard way of writing and then we have changed that to the standard form of revised simplex method that is so just shifted this is this become z dash plus 2x1 minus 3x2 plus ma1 plus 0s2 plus 0s3 plus ma3 equals to zero and the other three constraints as they were and again the same way we have uh, and the say again in the same way we have uh, written the uh, right this is the basic variable column then the b inverse matrix here also uh, so we have not written z but we have written we have written z dash we have written z dash then as i have said in z dash e1's or z's coefficient will be so we have put a, uh, a dotted line as you can see we have, we have, we have, we have put we have put a dot uh, dotted line every time under z we have z or z dash when we are writing we put a dotted line because above that is a little confusing other parts are not at all confusing so this and this remaining whatever is there in the in the original uh, this particular part so we have just put accordingly in the matrix notation this is 
as a1 is 1 0 0 this is 0 1 0 and 0 0 1 so 1 0 0 0 1 0 and 0 0 1 and see x1 x1 is 1 3 1 3 1 1 3 1 then 1 1 0 1 1 0 and this is 0 0 minus 1 and 0 0 so 1 3 1 so here other which are non uh, non basic variables are or non basic vectors are a2 a1 a2 and a5 so we have kept this then this side i am again i am repeating this side whatever the non basic vectors they will remain unchanged every time see here uh, Uh, here here in the first table in the second table also in the third table also this part everywhere in the previous problem also the first table whatever is the part in the second table that also remain other than the del jg minus cj bar other part remain as same all the tables will have been same so with the non basic part Initially, the one that was there in the non basic, so they will remain as unchanged. Only the B inverse part, every time there is a calculation and there is a change in the B inverse part, so B inverse part, B inverse part always changes, and accordingly, the changes occur in the problem. So, now uh, as I was saying here, uh, this row is writing this row is important, so Z dash always uh, here z dash implies z dash is maximum the previous problem it was only z but i am only denoting that as z dash because the original problem here is given as mean so i am denoting this as z dash the coefficient will be 1 and the coefficient so a3 was the corresponding artificial variable their coefficient its coefficient will be minus m slack variables coefficient will be 0 and another artificial variable its coefficient will be minus m and so current solution is current solution is a1 is equals to 1 s2 equals to 3 sorry sorry a1 equals to 5 s2 equals to 9 and a3 equals to 1 and that gives the value of z dash as minus 6 m and that 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 is written over here again every time under the xb column the first value first row value in the xb column is the value of z everywhere whatever problems i have done i have shown everywhere here also every time everywhere that particular part that under the xb column the first value in the row of z or z dash that particular value always gives the value of z always gives the value of z or z dash according to the problem whatever the problem we are doing so uh, so so again we will be calculating delta j or zj minus cj and most negative will enter so this is 2 minus m minus m so this is minus 2m plus 2 and the similar kind of calculation so this is most negative this is enters if this is enters then this value will come at the xk top most of at the top it will be coming at xk then the these three values will be obtained by multiply the row with this corresponding entering column so we have to multiply second one this third one this to get so this this value will be obtained by multiplying this row with this column this value will be obtained by multiplying this row no this row with this column that entering vector column and similarly the third way and we proceed the same way to get the other mistake in the calculation so we have to do it again and we have, uh, proceed the same way every time we get the correct result and uh, as you can see there is not much calculations also the graph is pretty simple and only this much rough I need to do, needed to do for this particular problem and 
uh, this problem or uh, I only needed to do only this much task for this previous problem. So I hope uh, this particular video helps you understanding the revised simplex method and when how we can use the artificial in case of artificial variable how we can use the revised simplex method and when you are not using artificial variable when you are only using the slag variable then how we can solve the solve uh, or use the revised simplex method for the maximization problem as well as minimization problem so i hope this video helps you